Glory, hallelujah. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord. We're going to have an awesome time tonight. You want to get your plate out with your fork and your knife, your spoon. Uh, we're going to have our Hanukkah teaching on tonight. Amen. It's going to be special for you to be able to glean from. And so our minister tonight will be Minister Pat Barnes. Amen. And so also get the children, gather the children around. Um, this is one of the areas that separate GBFIC from everyone else from many other ministries within the greater Kansas City area so that we want to be able, we have a mandate to get you connected to your Jewish roots, amen? And so we're going to be able to, to have you to be able to get some teaching on that tonight so that you can have a full understanding of some of the things that Jesus did, amen, and how that relates to you. So right now we're going to enter into um, praise and worship and this is a I learned this song many many years ago and it came in my spirit and I shared it with um, sister Jessica and she quickly she, I don't know if you had 24 hours I learned it today yes <laughs> <laughs> to be able to learn it so the words and hope she'll help us to gravitate onto the words and did we get to do the little clapping part in there please okay <laughs> in the Amen. house and online online you're not off the yes road. so stand <laughs> up and Amen, and the title of it, I, I, I think I read, is it the holy, I call it the holy, he's the holy one of Israel. They title and, it on Google searches as the mighty one of do Israel. Do we say holy in there? Not that, that I've seen it. Y'all know hey, I'm big on holiness. I make, we can, so we'll I've been singing it for years. He's we'll the holy one of yes, Israel. Yes, yes, yes. And amen. he is, amen. We Hallelujah. know he mighty, but wait, wait so mighty, hallelujah, is his holiness. And if you would get that, what makes you mighty is your holiness in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So there are three verses, but the chorus, as prophetess told me yesterday, is real easy to learn. And she was not exaggerating. It is real easy to learn. So the chorus is, he's the mighty one of Israel, the mighty one of Israel. His voice will be heard in the power of his word, the mighty one of Israel. So I sang that for you so you could sing it with me once we start. Amen. All right. <laughs> well, we might drop the piano off. <laughs> Better with the lyrics. Glory. He is the mighty one of Israel. And his glory will be known not just throughout the earth, but throughout the heavens forever and ever. And until he comes back for us, we are the carriers of his glory in this earth realm. We are his emissaries, his ambassadors, and we represent him. And it is truth that what you behold, you become. So as you praise him to this song, do it with the intention of becoming more like him. That is why we celebrate Hanukkah, so that we can become more of the light of the world. Amen. More of that light in darkness. The Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard, and you shall have a song in the night. Come to the mountain of the Lord, see his glory and his might, cause he's the mighty one of Israel, the mighty one of Israel. His voice will be heard in the power of his word, the mighty shall bloom and rejoice. Say to them that are fearful of heart, be strong and listen to his voice, cause he's the mighty one of Israel, yes. He's the mighty one of Israel. His voice will be heard in the power of his word, the mighty one of Israel. 
one. He's the Holy One of Israel. He's the Holy One of Israel. His voice shall be heard in the power of His word. The mighty Holy One of Israel. The eyes of the blind shall be opened and they'll see. The ears of the deaf shall hear. The lame man shall jump and leap as a heart. The tongue of the dumb shall speak. Cause he's the Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. His voice shall be heard in the power of his word. The mighty Okay, are we saying holy or mighty? I messed it up. <laughs> hey, it's all good. <laughs> Let's leave the piano out of it. Okay. Yes, so, yes, 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 yes. So everybody in the house, everybody at home, we are singing the chorus, and we are singing he's the holy one of Israel. Yes, Amen. yes. One, two, ready. He's the holy one of Israel. The holy one of Israel. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Even the, ooh, the atmosphere. Glory. His presence is here. When you talk about the holiness of Elohim and the, him being the Holy One of Israel, listen, that's where, listen, in the end, that's where you're going to live at. That's why it's so important for you to not just embrace religion. Hallelujah. That's why I say it, it, I believe that every individual should take the opportunity to go visit Israel. Amen. And so uh, we didn't get to go this year, but we are planning on going. I don't know if we're going to speed up the process. It depends on what 2021 looks like, but we will be there in 2022. Amen. So you need to be saving up your coins. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And this ministry is blessed because we bless Israel. Cry loud ministry is blessed because we bless Israel. That's the word. Amen. Those that bless Jerusalem shall what? You shall prosper. Amen. Not just in finances, but that prosperity covers a whole lot of stuff. Amen. So I have the opportunity. Listen, um, we're winding up on some time where you get your name on the list for the um, small group deliverance meeting, which is going to be on the 26th at 10 a.m. and at 1 p.m., okay? Yeah, you need to have, it's a hardcore RSVP. I think I'm going, because if, I, if my, if I may get to move some of those groups together, depending on what it looks like, and then Monday, we have on the 28th at 6.30 p.m., um, and I think I probably should have had standing room only after the prophet's corner on last night. <laughs> Amen. You would just would have been plumb dumb. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Listen, God, listen. Remember, those of you that did not watch this on Facebook, you need to go watch it because I can't recreate that anointing that was there. But 2021 is the year of the deliverer. Amen. And so, um, as the father stated, did we get to put the, um, the little clip? The father had a vision where the Lord was showing, if you haven't watched the movie Thor, with the hammer, that's what he's going to do to your enemies. Amen. And so, how I build my face prophetically when God gives me something, then I gravitate. I know what he said, but then I put it in my ear gate. And so, I found that 18-minute clip, and I just, oh, I just liked the one where he took it and wind it up, and he hit that, Bam. <laughs> Y'all say, oh, is prophets a little violent? No, I'm a warrior. <laughs> See, we forget about Jesus is not only the lamb, but he is the lion of Judah. Ah, glory be to God. He's, he's not only the lamb. We were like, oh, look at the little baby in the manger. Oh, 
You better recognize the God that you serve. Hallelujah. Amen. And so um, also please see me, text me. Um, we're going to be, I got a lot of stuff I got to get on the calendar. Um, there's two different components. I'm going to be doing um, training of deliverance workers, but then I'm also, do we have the ministry of compassion that is going to be coming forth as well. Um, that's going to be coming forth. So those of you that have, um, that are interested in that, give me a call and just find out. You'll know because you get a check in your spirit. You call. I'll see if you pass the test, and then we'll know. Amen. <laughs> that's the way it works. Hallelujah. Um, I was having a conversation with someone, and it, I was dealing with the Holy Spirit. And I said, well, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit. I said, what the worst he can say is no. I mean, I'm going to ask. <laughs> but see, that's, that's my intimate relationship with him. Amen. I mean, we got to what? Some of us get so frigid and rigid, oh, you know, you'll really get easily. How about if you ask the Holy Spirit a lot of stuff, and when he tell you knowing you receive that, then you won't be concerned about people rejecting you. Because if you can take a no from the Holy Spirit, uh-oh, let, let, let me move on. Let me move on. So, and rem, and so we're going to do today, we're going to do the money cometh decree. I have already decreed that money come into your hand for your household and for the kingdom of God. You got to understand that you live in the kingdom in the name of Jesus. And what have, listen, um, I get, I look at all my offerings that I've done and I lay hold, I be thanking God for my 100 fold return in the name of Jesus. So when we're going into 2021, listen, you're going to, you, they say fat. Not the F-A-T, but God's fat. Hallelujah. That do what? It, you're going to be so fat that it says what? The anointed destroys the yoke. Pew. No longer Satan's going to have you bound in the name of Jesus. So are we ready? I'm going to read this, the first part of it, just so we can move along, because I'm excited about the teaching on today. Amen. So that we can... Um, move on. I'm just hearing in my spirit. I'm trying to make sure Deacon is here. I don't have um, anything. Remember, um, services start at 10 30 a.m. on Sunday. Uh, we want to thank for all our community is growing. Oh, let me, we have the 21st. Yes, on the 21st, it's called Monday School. This is for ages 7 to 12. A man called Monday School, ages 7 to 12. So you will just let um, Elder Smith know. Parents, you should have her number and let her know that your child, they're working on the fruit of the spirits. I want to thank um, Sister Amanda for the wonderful, um, the wonderful boxes that she's already done. I say, girl, how did you get that done that fast? She, she, say, she say, well, you know I got time on my hand. <laughs> Amen. It's good to sit for those. So you don't always have to have an assignment. I keep telling y'all, call prophets. I will give you something to do. Amen. It does not stop because we're not coming to the house of God that there's something physical that maybe something you can do from home. You working from home. Uh-oh. Work for Jesus at home. Hallelujah. Oh, Jessica said she want to prophesy she's working from home. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, some of y'all ain't going to know how to act when it's time to go back to the workplace. Amen. You're going to be like, God, what's going on? My, my gas, oh, I'm, I'm spending money for gas now for my car. <laughs> and listen, there's going to be a special tree. I ain't going to let the cat out the bag, but you're going to want to be in tune. There's going to be an on-the-go prophet's corner next Tuesday. Ah, it's it's going to be epic. That's all I'm going to say. It's going to be epic. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. So are we ready? I'm going to start reading, and I'll tell you guys when to confess with me. According to the word of God, I declare that money cometh to the body of Christ, and money cometh to me for the sake of the gospel. I am laying a foundation, and God is performing his word in my life. I call Glory Bible Fellowship International Church, 
debt free. I call in all the necessary finances to completely pay for all the properties, equipments, and buildings, and to do everything God has called us as a church to do. We will tell the untold, we will reach the unreached, and help the believers walk in faith and victory by the anointing, teaching, and preaching of the gospel. I call GBFIC and myself debt free. I proclaim that I have necessary finances to do everything God has called me to do with enough in store to bless others. Father, I honor you by putting you first in my tithes and offering. I thank you that you supply all my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus and grant me the desires of my heart. Repeat after me. You are bringing me into my wealthy place. You are opening the windows of heaven and pouring me out a blessing that it overflows. I believe, I receive, double in every area of my life, double anointing, double rejoicing, double in my giving, double in my receiving, double in my income. Double in my assets. I receive double in Jesus' name. I call my house and all my property paid in full. I believe I receive raises, bonuses, sales, commissions, favorable settlements, estates, inheritances. Income, gifts, surprises. I really like this one. Lost money found. Bills decrease and paid off. Blessings and increase. I thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs so that I can give more to the kingdom of God. And if I am needing a new career, create one for me. Open doors for me. And I will give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Come on, let's pull from heaven and say, money cometh to me now. Money cometh to me now. You are bringing me into my wealthy place. Amen. If those of you that are in the house, if you want to bring your seat in, those of you there, you can go through the app. I really am enjoying the new app. Amen. It's, it makes me go over there a little more. And then we have, um, let me just tell on my daughter, because um, we have another for the board meetings and leaders. And so let me tell you what, she, she tried to throw some shade at me. She says, oh, great, another, a, another group that my mother can text me in. <laughs> and, and so Bishop said, well, you know what? She really don't do, use the app that much. Uh, but now I am, just because she said that. Amen? Every time I get a notification that something's coming through on that particular group app, amen, that's for the board. I'm going to make sure I go in there and say something. Listen, so everybody's put their seed in, amen. Listen, we need to end the year out strong. Um, I'm, I'm not, I don't want, I, sometimes I don't want to give the name to tell the person's, um, I, you, know, you know I tell your testimony, because I tell y'all testimony better than y'all. That's why I do it, but I'm going to say this one. I'm not going to say the name. They already came in and gave their 2020 end of the year seed and their 2021 beginning of the year seed. They already came, came in, just, just am, didn't care. You know, we only have so many people. Y'all probably can, there's somebody y'all probably wouldn't even guess. Then again, y'all could. It, no, it's not, it's, it's no, and just get this, it's not any one of the leaders. Hallelujah. It's not one, it's not a leader. It is a lay individual, but they are good and referencing and keeping up and paying with ties and hearing. Amen. And that's already what? 
So when you leave your hand, it's like it's already done. When you make your mind up, hallelujah, because it's a, and they remember, they say, listen, you know what the, remember you had the bowls? You know, and I was like, oh, that's what you're, oh, yeah, yes. So we're still believing that we're going to be in the house of God for a watch that we may have to, turn, take, you know, change some things around because they have it to wear, um, I think it's only to 10, 10 p.m. right now. So we're finding out what they're going to do about that. Amen. And as Minister Pat is getting ready to get set up, I want to share this with you while she's getting set up. The importance about covering. We have one of our um, returning believers that um, came back under covering probably about three months ago. And she's in a living facility. And so she makes sure she stays connected and everything. And so, Minister Pat, you can get in, you can get in position. You're not blocking anything. So yesterday, you know, I, I had, she left me a message, and she just didn't sound right. Now, remember, she's in a facility that's supposed to have doctors and all this stuff, right? That's supposed to be taken care of. That's why she's there. I'm making a point. I'm being facetious. So I called back. I said, uh -uh. I called and I said, I said, are you on some form of medication because you're not sounding right? And she said, she said, she, she said no, because she said no. So I went there, I was getting ready. Y'all know I take my little beauty naps. And before I can I get my beauty, I was getting ready to try to lay down and get my beauty nap. The Lord said, call back. I said, call the nurse and tell the nurse, push your nurse button and tell them to come into the room. And I did that. And so I was going to lay there, and I called back. He said, call the main line. I called the main line. By the time they went in, they had to say they had to take her to the hospital. And we began to start. But before I got off there, Mr. Pat, I started praying. I couldn't understand what she was saying, and I started praying and or what have you. So she, now this is the thing. Now, I don't know how Sister Claiborne can remember my phone number. But even at the hospital, because I had no way. And let me tell y'all this. We got time. When I called back to the front desk, and let me, I'm, let me help some of y'all. When you go into the hospital, the points are cut. You better tell them what your pastor name is or address, right? I called and asked the lady. I said, well, she don't have any family members. I, I don't have the number. Could you write my information down? She's a nurse at the station. I don't have a pen. You want to leave your soul salvation over to folks. That woman told me she did not have a pen. And I said, you at the nurse's station to write my information down so that if a family member or someone contacts, they can be able to contact me. She said, no, she didn't have a pen. So we had to rely on the power of prayer because there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. So today, she called me. And I asked the nurse, because the way she sounded, see, this way I said, did she have a stroke? Oh, we don't know. We're just waiting on the, on the doctors or what have you. Five hours later, I was able to hear through the phone, and that's what she's being healed of. You best believe you better get anointed. We can't leave our soul salvation in the hand well, of mere men and women. You need some Holy Ghost, spirit-filled, faith believers function around you when you're in those hospital rooms. I'm just going to stop right there. That's the reason why my other daughter, who had the, when the, they made sure they kicked her out, because she was playing the demon route. Shook up the whole nurse's station. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Oh, we think you can heal at home. Hallelujah. Let's get her. She needs a microphone. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, that was, she got the yellow one. Amen. So this is Minister Pat Bond. Um, she know a little Hebrew. Say something to us. It, it, Welcome to people in, give a, teach them, you know, teach us about two, three Hebrew words that we can. I, I got Boko Tov down. You got Boko Tov. Tell them what morning. that means. Baruch that Boko Tov is good morning. Listen, let me get, when we was in Israel, I kept, we, I was saying, so I can remember that I say Boko Tov. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Glory be to Luca God. Luca Ba, welcome. Um, I just want to pray first before we start. It, it's just going to be, it's just delightful um, to be here today. Thank you, prophetess and uh, bishop. Adam for allowing me to do this because this is one of the most joyous times of the year. And uh, so this is a time of refreshing. So Father God, we just thank you and praise you for this time that we can all come together, um, those online and those that are here in the sanctuary and all around the world, even those that are not with us, a time of just gathering for a time of miracles, uh, as you call Nisim in um, Hebrew, miracles. We just expect you to come in tonight and just enjoy us tonight. Just dwell amongst us and show yourself through this wonderful Hanukkah season. In Jesus' name, we thank you and praise you. Well, thank you so much. Um, tonight what we're going to do is talk about Hanukkah. Uh, it, just a season of joy, a season of miracles, as I said before. And hopefully tonight what we're going to just discuss is we're going to talk about the purpose of Hanukkah, a little bit about the history of Hanukkah, how it came about, about and just the time of celebration that's happening today. And probably when I get done, prophetess may tell us a little bit about how they celebrate Hanukkah and um, why it's real important for Christians uh, to open up their hearts to Hanukkah as well. Um, it's just a wonderful season. I think that you all see why as we go through this teaching today. Many people uh, see Hanukkah as being just an alternative like to Christmas or Kwanzaa, as African Americans may do Kwanzaa. But it's, it's deeper than that. And there was a price really to be paid for Hanukkah that we'll talk about in a little bit when we discuss the history. Uh, it's a holiday that does recall an event that happens, an event that was a miraculous deliverance for the Jewish people that took place actually during a time of silence. And I say that because there's a 400 period of time, year period of time um, that takes place between the Old Testament and the Bible and the New pa Testament in the Bible. And it's often referred to as um, being a time of silence. Um, and during that time, so that, the reason I bring that up is because you won't find Hanukkah through the Bible like the other feasts. You're not going to go to the Old Testament or the Torah and see Hanukkah there with all of the, like Sukkot, Passover. We won't see it there. But you will see it in one place, which is going to be our of course, keynote scripture, if you got one. <laughs> That's, that was easy. <laughs> I didn't have to search too hard. Um, but in John, okay, the 10th chapter of John 22, and that's where Jesus, or Yeshua, as we would call him if we were in Israel, um, where he went to Jerusalem for the festival of dedication. And so you say dedication. Well, Hanukkah means dedication. So that's the meaning of Hanukkah. So, um, and Hanukkah is an eight-day celebration that commemorates a victory of the Maccabees. And the Maccabees kind of showed up during that 400-year uh, period, which is also known as, I guess, the intertestamental period. And I guess that's just because you've gone from Malachi to Matthew. And so and there were no other prophets or anything before Jesus came on the scene. But Jesus existed, and that, that's one of the things that I think, um, I just want to paint the picture before we even get there towards the end when we talk a little bit more about Jesus, is Jesus, he is Jewish, okay? Um, and he's Jewish, so in the Old Testament, when he went through the feast and all of that, he lived during that time. And then in Matthew, he shows up on the scene in the New Testament. So um, even though there's a 400 period of silence and all of the books may not have been canonized, Jesus is still there and he's still moving. And we just, we pick up with him in Matthew in the New Testament. So it's so important that we bridge those, even though there was four year, 400 years of silence in the writing that we see in the Holy Bible, it doesn't mean things were not happening. 
and a lot of things were happening, apparently. <laughs> and that's how we came about with Hanukkah, one of those experiences. And um, I believe it was after Alexander the Great had died, and then um, we had new, you had the Greek influence, and then we had new kings on the scene. Uh, we had um, Antiochus the third. okay? He was a king, a Syrian king, and he, he allowed the Jewish, he came in to rule, and he allowed the Jewish people to keep their religion but, and kind of stay nearby. But still, it was an outside influence. It was beginning to have the Greek influence and paganism, et cetera. Well, after his reign, his son came in, okay? And that was Anaochus IV, Epiphany. He um, was not as kind, so he wanted it to stop, okay? No more learning your traditions, no more learning the Torah and your word, the written word or the spoken word even. He didn't want it to happen. Uh, they went in and desecrated, really defiled the temple at that time. There's even stories of maybe pigs being uh, burned on the altar and uh, people were killed. So it was a time of chaos and an uproar. And that's when we have an era called the Maccabean. And that, that happened somewhere between 165 to 63 BC. And there was a priest, an elderly priest, by the name of Mattathias. He had five sons, and they lived in a village near Jerusalem. So they were near the temple. The temple was in Jerusalem. So they were near. And he was a priest, so he, you know, that was very important to him. That's his livelihood, if you think about it. Because as a priest, you would go in, into the temple, and you would make sacrifices on behalf of the people at that time. All of that shut down. You're no longer living the way you're used to. Kind of sounds familiar. You know, that can happen, and we, we can take things for granted. I'm sure they were just going along by day by day, and yeah, some paganism has come in, and we see that throughout the Bible. A king after king after king, you know, uh, we let things come into the church. And then, um, you know, and we allow it. Humanism, things like that, you know, secularism in the church. It, but we still go on, and we're, we get comfortable with it little by little. But now it's all gone. You don't have a place anymore. So, you know, it's like Mr. Nibbles, <laughs> little by little, or Pac-Man. <laughs> That's right, games tonight, because Hanukkah's about fun and games. <laughs> I could be the hatchet woman, so I'm sure somebody's... I know, I, can, I feel it coming to me right now <laughs> that somebody's saying... Now what's she going to do with this one? <laughs> like, okay, this is a time of joy. <laughs> yes, okay. They're laughing because they know, <laughs> they know me. Okay. So anyway, this Levi king, a priest, and his five sons lived in um, Jerusalem. And what started to happen is the Syrian officials, they came in and they were really trying to enforce this heathen sacrifice in the village. And so he took his sons, he decided he was going to revolt against this. He took his sons and his family and those who wanted to join up, and they went to the mountains. Okay? And after he kind of subsided, he was no able to, able to do it. His sons continued. It took about three years for this revolt. It was guerrilla warfare. And um, Prophet has mentioned the hammer. Well, they were the Maccabees. Okay? Maccabee means hammer. And I, I did, <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> yes, so I, I thought when you said that, I said, oh, that's very prophetic. So they took the hammer <laughs> to the Syrian king and his people, and they revolted, and they took back the temple. It took some time, it took some planning, it took tenacious attitudes and people persevering, working together for a common good. And they took back what belonged to them. When they went into the, um, the temple to cleanse the temple, approximately 165 BC, give or take, um, they, took, they retook Jerusalem, cleansed the temple, restored the biblical worship. Whew. Can you imagine? What it felt like for God. I mean, it's always, I think about, you know, we always think, oh, this was so nice for us. But I always tried to think, 
Father, what was it like for you when they came back in, they began to sweep up things, you know, they deodorized, <laughs> took the Clorox, and then they decided they went in and they had one vial of oil, enough for one day, and there was the menorah, and they lit the menorah with the one vial of oil. That begins a miracle. But he must have been going, go people, go. These are my children. <laughs> These are my children. You can't keep them down. They want me just as much as I want them. So they did that. They went into the temple. They regained the territory for the kingdom of God and for their own purposes so they can dwell there with their father. And once they got into the temple, they had the one vial of oil. This is the Hanukkah miracle. Now there's nowhere, as I mentioned, in the Bible that you're gonna find Hanukkah except for in John. But according to the Talmud, which is one of the Judaism's most central texts, and they have a book, they tell the story of the menorah, the one vial of oil. It continued to burn for eight days. And it, they only had enough for a single day. But eight days allowed them enough time to gather up enough oil to keep it burning. May the fire on the altar never burn out. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they were singing that. So that left them time to get the fresh supplies and get them in. Um, and of course, they were all inspired. And so that's begin Hanukkah. And I, and I, I want to, to understand, remember when she's saying how the number eight means new beginning. You got to remember that it, when God is sharing a story with us, all that was no coincidence. Because like she stated, the cleaning up and coming in, that new beginning that was taking place. And something else you said, daughter, about the, the ter taking back the territory for God. Right, how many of us, when you're doing your, I know um, a lot of us do prayer rock, especially um, Sister Anne Marie, but we're taking territory. And if we would get that understanding, if the Maccabees did that, then how much more we should do that? If we want to get the standards back in the house of God to be properly, God need people in, that he's showing us a story. Listen, they didn't make excuses. They took a stand for God. Amen. Yes. So they're back in the temple now, and we now have what we call Hanukkah. They decided they couldn't celebrate with Sukkot or the Feast of Tabernacles because they were under, you know, this rule. So now they begin, they said the first year they decided we're going to go ahead and do Sukkot. We're going to celebrate. Sukkot is a seven-day holiday. And then the next year they decided that they would begin Hanukkah, which is the eight-day holiday, which we observe now. Okay, or those that believe in doing it, Jewish people all over the world, or it's a big holiday. It's huge. Even if you're not religion, the secular <laughs> Jewish people enjoy it. Everyone enjoys Hanukkah. So how is it? It's celebrated on the 25th of Kislev. Now, the Jewish calendar is lunar, or as far as lunar months. So it can happen any time between November and December. Most of the time it falls in the winter in December. But sometimes it could be in November um, since it's it changes. And often it's also called the Festival of Lights. Okay? Um, years later, I think when people were reading the Talmud and reading the story of the Maccabees, um, I believe it was Jophie, Josephus, but um, don't quote me. <laughs> My was it that about yeah later decided he said this is the festival of lights my goodness the menorah is lit and you know so it became the festival of lights and holiday where you celebrate in the holiday celebrated with lighting the menorah and um, traditional foods games and gifts now when they went into the temple it was a menorah and the menorah is normally seven it has seven branches this is a Hanukkah. 
okay? Uh, the Hanukkah, if I was facing it, I would light it from right to left, and I would light it with this little guy. This is the shamash. This, and shamash means servant or helper. So um, for eight days, the Jewish people will, they would say prayers. The first day, it, there's only three prayers that are said. The first day, all three prayers will be recited before lighting the candle. So the first day, you would say all three par prayers and then light the first candle, let it burn out. Yes, yes. Tomorrow, the 10th, at sundown, or in the evening, is the beginning of Hanukkah, and it will go to the 18th in the evening, okay? So you're not too late, so you can get out and get all your party and festival <laughs> things and get ready for Hanukkah. So, um, so they start off with one of the prayers. I'm going to start, I'm going to just read the first one, and forgive my Hebrew, but I'm going to do it just so you get an idea of what it sounds like. You can look it up online, um, and um, Bishop usually goes through this, <laughs> and he's really good at it, so uh, bear with me. Um, the first blessing uh, is, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaAlom, Asher Kedeshanu Bemitzvotav Vevanu Lehad Lik Nier Sheh Hanikla. And in English, Let's see what it means. Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to kindle the Hanukkah lights. So he's commanding us. And um, a candle is near, a norot. And it says uh, for candles, norot. It's plural. And there, it's asking us to halit near. So to light it for Hanukkah. And so we want to light so Hanukkah is a time of light. So if you were to visit someone during the season, you would have lots of lights will be up. Um, they will play games, there's songs, and usually they will sing the uh, prayers. And there's three of them. I won't do that to you tonight. <laughs> that would be the last time you probably see me. But <laughs> and Minister Dante is going, yeah, no. <laughs> no, okay. But they sing a song, it's called Ma'az Sur, which is Rock of Ages. And so that song is, is sung usually traditionally as well for Hanukkah. And the first two words of the song, Ma'az Sur, means stronghold of rock. And who's our rock? Jesus, Yeshua, Hamashiach. So, and the song goes on and it, it talks about uh, various oppressors who have risen up against the Jewish people over time, like Pharaoh, Nebuchadnezzar, Haman, and how they have ultimately all been defeated. The song also expresses the wishes for a final redemption. And Jesus is our redeemer. And um, so, so they would sing like the candles, then the food. <laughs> Okay, I'm a foodie, so this is a big deal for me. I'm there if anybody's having a party. Call me. <laughs> um, Lachis, and that's a, like a potato cake. So it's fried in lots of oil. So fried foods for the oil, because the oil never burn out for the eight days. Yeah, <laughs> catfish, chicken, anything you want fried. And uh, usually the pancakes or the potato cakes are served with applesauce. Don't, don't do that to them. They, they don't need no more help. <laughs> Amen. Just one day. <laughs> one day. That's it. Just one day. Back on your vegetables tomorrow or the next day. Uh, so, um, so all of that good food and um, with the applesauce and sour cream. Another good thing, if you like sweets, donuts, and usually homemade jelly donuts filled. <laughs> Souf gagnot, yes, yeah. So you would have donuts and games. This is one of the, this is a dreidel, okay? And if you could see, it has the Hebrew letters around there, okay? And they stand for something, okay? Neskado haya sham. This is a shin, okay? Which is, sham means there. 
So it means a great miracle there in Jerusalem. If we were in Jerusalem, guess what? We would have a different dreidel. It would say Neskado Haya Po for being there, here, okay? So a great miracle happened here if we were in Jerusalem. So I'm trying to get one of those, so <laughs> I sound like a salesperson, but if you do have one with the, <laughs> the pay, I'll take it. So, and this is a game that the children play. Um, they really enjoy doing that. So, Neskando Hayasham. So, great miracle happening there. Uh, the dreidel game is kind of interesting. There's kind of a story that goes behind it because when, the, when they were going through this time where they were oppressed and couldn't, you know, study the Word of God, the, they would study, and then when they hear the guards come, they would put something down and start spinning the dreidel. So they would think they were just playing games. But all around, they were studying all the time. Okay? Um, one of the things that, another thing is guilt or money. And people will get, um, that's what it means, or kasif in Hebrew, if you're in Israel. And oftentimes, just for the party, they'll get little chocolate coins. And they would play that. But in reference to them studying the word and going through all that trouble to disguise what they're doing just to get the word of God. It made me think about people in underground churches. We don't think about them very often in China or Iran. Um, they can't walk around with the Holy Bible in their hand like we can and just, you know, stop someone on the street and begin to minister to them in the name of Jesus. So they have to hide out in a secret place just to get the word. And many of them, if they could get just a page out of the Bible, that is more valuable than any silver and gold or anything else that you can have. And those of you that know Yeshua and know God, you know what that means, because the Word of God is food, it's nourishment, it is a life giver. If you have no life, if you're hungry and thirsty, I encourage you to get into the Word of God. Get connected with Yeshua. Get connected with Jesus Christ. There's somebody who can help you get connected, because it is a life giver. When you're sick, it's your medicine. Okay, so anyway, the this, it just made me think of having to hide out to learn the Word of God, you know? So in, in perspective, yes, maybe we're down to 10 people in church now because of an invisible virus, but you know what? We can still do this at home and other places that we may go, and we do have, we have more than most. So it's something to be grateful for in this joyous season. So. Uh, you know, if you were feeling all alone or thinking that, you know, boy, we're being controlled or whatever, you know, let it go. We got the Word of God, and the Word of God delivered them. I have to wonder, what if they didn't have the Word? What if they said, oh, well, they've got us. You know, we'll wait till they let us go. Then we can read the Word again and sacrifice in our own temple. I think not, you know? I thank God for people like that priest that said, you know what, enough is enough. And then they took the hammer, the Maccabees. <laughs> you get it, sometimes enough is enough. And they studied the word, and that's probably what gave them, just my thought, probably what gave them the fullness of what they needed to begin the revolt to take back what was rightfully theirs. Okay, so they didn't go in and steal something. They took back what was theirs in the first place. So uh, the word delivers. Just a sidebar. The word heals. <laughs> okay? Yeah. The word is a life giver. And so why, do, why would you think Christians would want to really celebrate Hanukkah? And I had told you, one, Jesus did. So if we read in John 10, 22, 
Uh, this is NLT. Jesus celebrated it as stated in John. Well, Jesus celebrated it. It was now winter, and Jesus was in Jerusalem at the time of Hanukkah, the festival of dedication. Remember Hanukkah's dedication? He was in the temple walking through the section known as Solomon's Colonnade. Now, Jesus, he often went up to Jerusalem for the feast. So this is just another time. Now he's in Jerusalem. So he came for the holidays to the temple. And in the um, complete Jewish Bible, it said, Then came Hanukkah in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Yeshua was walking around inside the temple area, area in Shlomo's colonnade. So he was there, and they call it Hanukkah at that time in the complete Jewish Bible. Also, there's so much symbolism, you could really start to spiritualize with <laughs> Hanukkah. But uh, Jesus is the light of the world. You know, when you see the light of the menorah and, and this season, the Hanukkah, which has the nine verses, branches versus the seven, but he is the light of the world. And um, I believe it was in, um, it says, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. He is the life giver. That connection with God for them at the temple is the same kind of connection we have with Jesus. He's connected us to the Father. And we have the Holy Spirit, three in one. You know, we're fully connected. And he is the life giver. The light of the world. And, um, and that was John 8 and 12. And in the complete Jewish Bible, it says, Yeshua spoke to them again. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light which gives life. And light in Hebrew is or. So you have, he is the or of the world, ha-alam the world. And in Mark 12, remember the song, Rock of Ages? It's in Mark 12, 10, in the complete Jewish Bible, it says, the very rock which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. He is our rock. He is our light. He is Yeshua HaMashiach. And it was in the winter time that Jesus came, and um, this again is in the NLT, it was now winter, and Jesus was in Jerusalem at the time of Hanukkah, the festival of dedication, and he's here today. This is the time of year where these are the miracles that are coming, the new beginning, eight, number of eight, eight she said, was the days of the festival, new beginning. So if you need a new beginning, things haven't been going well for you, the children are acting up, or you're not feeling well. Maybe you're having health issues. Whatever it is, the light of the world, the rock, Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the answer. The word of God. Hanukkah, anyone? Thank you so much. Prophetess, do you want to tell us about how you guys celebrate Hanukkah? And Amen. Thank you. I'll keep my mask on so you can, you don't have to keep, keep yours on. Come on, that it was an awesome job. Amen. We may have some questions, so you just sit right there. Okay. Yeah. Um, so one of the things, and, and then we have Bishop is here. I, I was just sitting there because it was just so, to see, you know, the, to see Bishop, we've been, we've been doing this for over 15 years, and for God to bring someone in that has that heart as well to be able to embrace that. And one of the things that just that I think that I wanna say is that so that people can have a right understanding, it doesn't mean that we do not believe in Christmas, amen. We want you to understand that you can add this to your Christian walk. And so 
Uh, one of the things, um, I was sort of glad when we started this here because I didn't have to mess around with a Christmas tree. <laughs> Listen, and so with the boys, it was, and my boys enjoyed this. So this is the way that the black stock household, how we were celebrated. I would get, I would save my little popcorn. You get a little bit, I just get a lot of popcorn canisters and I put everybody's name on, including Bishop and everyone. And I was sitting in front of the fireplace. And so I would give them things that they needed, okay? Because when Christmas came, those were, if, if they, father was gonna, get, was gonna get them something big, that's when we gave that particular gift. And my boys would be so excited because every, for eight days, they would go to the canister and open up and they would find what is it that mom and dad put in there. And the other thing is that it takes away, and I'm gonna say this, this is prophet's coin term, Santa Claus Jesus. Because see, that's mostly who we celebrating when Christmas comes. And we, I know we said, you did a key said, that Jesus is the reason for the season. And so, oh, I need my iPad. Um, so, and we would do that. And so, like she said, you take it and you light it, and it's the children to be a part of that. And I think I did that. We probably did that up until they, you know, probably started leaving the house, going to college, you know, or what have you. And so, this is something that you can add to your Christian walk. And so by no means, you know, that we're saying, oh, we don't celebrate Christmas. Listen, we, we need to be able to celebrate that Jesus, because of Jesus Christ being born, what that means for us, okay? Because they're going to pretty soon want to try to take that away from you. But guess what? One day, if they did, and you started, you already had this implemented, that you were celebrating what? The light of the world. Who is the light of the world? And I just took the liberty. Y'all know I just like going. Um, think about the light. Now, she gave you John 8 and 12. Then spoke Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness. The world needs that right now. But shall have the light of life. John 1 and 5. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehend that it not. You should be want to be so filled with light that darkness don't even want to come near you. Right. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I can look at individuals and I can tell people that need deliverance because they look dark. They look dark, literally. Some, pe some people you don't even need a discernment for. Hallelujah. And what keeps me to keep doing deliverance meetings, even when sometimes I say I may not want to do it, when I see the transformation of people that had darkness on them, even to the point of death, and see those demons cast out and they hold transformation, that's because the light of God enter in. Psalms 119.05, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. How do we... We need this. You know what I probably, those of you that have, even if you don't have it, even if you just get you, and please don't leave the candles on. And leave the house. You know, this is, uh, or what happened, because this is what AJ, when he was smaller, he, and pa a Pastor Adam got in that little candle thing with the wax. He had done dip. dip he had the, he done dip everything. Pins, this right here, everything was dipped in the wax, amen. <laughs> so please watch the stuff around the children, amen. Matthew 5, 14, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Come on, you need to say, listen, you are the light of the world. So over these next eight days, why don't you reacquaint yourself with, look, when we did in Hanukkah to see, you know what? I need more light in my life. Right, right, right. Hallelujah. Listen, darkness do not like light. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. What's that? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. 
This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Praise God. I'm just excited. I'm full of the light. Ain't no darkness in me, baby. Hallelujah. And I am imploring you, encourage you that over these next eight days, whether you are grown folk and you don't want to have to do this, but you will cover and look at the scriptures that's representing light and believe God for your eight-day miracle. Take back. That's what the Maccabees did. And maybe Bishop can even come up and give us some. They took, Bishop, I almost peeled out my skin. Why you ain't tell me? I didn't remember about the Maccabees with the hammer. So when I was talking about Thor, he talking about, yeah, you could have gave me a hit. I already get excited around it. He probably said, I am not give, give this woman no more revelation because I would have been off the chain. I'm a, it's too late now. You should have gave that to me. When I go home, I'm going to play my 18-minute video, and I'm going to watch Thor with the hammer, and I'm just going to everything. What, what you need God to take out? Poverty, lack, sickness, COVID-19. I want to see you no more 2021. Whatever it is, pain, suffering, whatever it is, let God come in and destroy it. Amen. And you know when they take that hammer and hit, light spark. Holly, I'm getting excited. Bitch, better come on. I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless y'all all. Those are awesome teachings. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for uh, Minister Pat and Prophetess Adrian Blackstock. Hey, y'all do a good job. Praise the Lord. One thing that God showed me while I was even driving over here is uh, that we have to be intentional to do everything that, the, that Jesus did. Now, not all of y'all going to be able to go to Israel, but I know some of y'all will. Right? Israel's got to be one of your, it, let me just, I, I don't like to use the term bucket list. Because that, that, that tells people that you're getting ready to kick the bucket. We don't kick the bucket. But on your heaven list, you need to go to Israel to see the specific places that Jesus did and went and did everything that he could do. One thing he did, and I know she touched on it, John 1 and 5 and John 10 and 22, is he celebrated Hanukkah. And y'all, we have to remember that Jesus started the Christian movement, but he wasn't a Christian. In order for the, he had to go up to the Father for then the people to be Christ like. So, as a Jew, Hanukkah, although it's extra biblical, we don't see it in our Bible, but in the books that Jews read, it's prominent. So much so that he had to be at the temple during the celebration. So, I'm not telling you to change everything that you're doing. But for you to be Christian means that you should be striving to be Christ-like as much as possible. And, and Christ, right, celebrate Passover, I'm celebrating Passover. He celebrated uh, Shavuot, I'm celebrating Shavuot. He's celebrating Feast of Tabernacles, I'm celebrating Feast of Tabernacles. He celebrated Hanukkah. I'm celebrating Hanukkah. He would have celebrated or he would have uh, did the feast uh, as part of the Esther celebration. He would have did it. We do it. Why? Because I want to be as close to Jesus Christ as possible. Let me give you a description. I got to show this to me as I was coming over. It's Matthew 4.
And we're going to start at... Uh, Eleven. This is directly after the temptation of the devil. Tell your neighbor, say after. We have to recognize that after the devil tempted you, don't mean he left you alone forever. He just left you alone for a season. Matthew four and eleven says, "Then the devil leaveth him, and behold." angels came and ministered unto him. Let me help y'all out. That's why it's important to know that you have angels. Because while the devil's attacking you, eventually your help cometh. My help cometh from the Lord. Right? I, I remember the scripture goes uh, something like, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Sometimes we have to recognize I don't care what the devil try to do to me. The Lord is my light. And uh, Hanukkah is, a, is a 25th of uh, Kislev. It's the 25th of Kislev. The reason why they celebrate Christmas, all them lights and hang up on the tree, is because they really just copying uh, my Jewish brothers and sisters because they knew that the light, the Messiah, was coming. But it said, now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee, and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast, in the borders of Zebulon and Naphtali, and that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. This is part of God's fulfillment of prophecy, that my brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ would see the light we see the Hanukkah light and who is really we dedicating it the light of the world who's the light of the world Yeshua let's, let's, let's keep reading because it's good and then I'm going to take my seat the land of Zebulon the land of Naphtali by the way of the sea beyond, beyond Jordan Galilee of Gentiles the people which sat in darkness saw great light. And let me help y'all out. I don't know about y'all, but when I was uh, without Jesus, I sat in great darkness. Matter of fact, I, I, I lived in darkness. I, I, I might not, you know what, and most of the time when you're living in darkness, you don't know you're living in darkness. Uh, I thought it was Okay. This darkness was cool because I didn't know anything but darkness. However, all you got to do is ex get exposed to the light. Y'all go help me. Like I said, I have studied this text. And we taking the church through Matthew right now. And God just brought this revelation on the way over. Look what it said. It said, the people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them that which sat in the region, in the shadow of death, light is sprung up. Don't you know that when you get the revelation that the never-ending light comes in you, the new beginning light that comes in you. Let me just tell you, the reason why the, the eight day is so important is because seven is the number of perfection. Eight is the number of new beginning, right? I love it because you, you, you're, you're perfect. God perfects you during the season and then gives you a brand new beginning. And you get a fresh light. It, it, it takes so long to make new oil. But God, during those times, allowed that anointing that oil to last until the, it was made new. I, 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 I can't, I, you can't make this stuff up. That God is about to perfect you during this season of Hanukkah because he's just going to expose you to the light. And that light is going to allow you to get your family, 
to get your home, to get your children, to get your grandchildren, to get anybody that's associated to you, if you understand what God is doing right now. He's saying that those people that are in darkness, I want you to get around them. I want you to share my story. I want you to tell them about Hanukkah. I, I want you to understand that you have an opportunity during these eight days, because when people come on over and they see your menorah up, your, your Hanukkah up, they see it up, they're going to say, what, why are you celebrating it? Well, it's because I, I have such a great love for the light. And, and that light is Yeshua. And, 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 and I'm grafted in and I'm going to do whatever Jesus did. And I know he was in the temple uh, uh, to celebrate Hanukkah. And guess what? Now you've exposed them to what? The light. And I go out and get Hanukkah candles. Go out and get a, a Hanukkah. Go out and do it. And, and if somebody asks you, why are you getting that? Aren't you a Christian? You say, yes. And I want to celebrate the light. I'm dedicating my house to the light. I'm ministering the light to my family. I'm ministering my light you want to come over and celebrate, we could do the first prayers together. Could you imagine what impact you would make? And you could even read them in this scripture. Matthew 4 and 16 is not a Hanukkah scripture, but we just made it. We indoctrinated it. We, we made it special to, for people to understand that until I saw the light, I was sitting in darkness. Matter of fact, I was under the shadow of death until a light came on me. You see that? A thriving city on the Galilee was in complete darkness until a light showed up. My brothers and my sisters, my sons and my daughters, if you don't get anything, get this. Your job as light people, is to expose as many people as possible that are sitting in darkness to the marvelous light. What great way to open the door to a new conversation. They, maybe some others that they didn't hear before is to talk about Hanukkah in an exciting way as you relate it to Yeshua. Amen? Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Again, I want to thank uh, Minister Pat. I want to thank Prophetess. Any questions from the, uh, on Facebook or YouTube, anything? Okay, well, let us close in this prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you're doing in, at Glory Bible Fellowship and what you're doing in the hearts of God's people. You are changing our behavior for the better. We're getting a greater understanding of who you are, Jesus, Yeshua, Hamashiach, in your relationship to your Jewish roots. We thank you that you're teaching us to do everything that you would try to, that you would do. So Heavenly Father, we thank you that you continue to expose us to the light. We thank you that we are made brand new. We thank you that the anointing is going to last to a new beginning. We thank you that we'll be prepared for Hanukkah to start. We thank you for the teaching in advance, so we still got time to be prepared as a family. So Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you. And we honor you today. If you need the first day prayers, contact the church, 816-795-1900. And we'll send them out. We bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. As a matter of fact, before you get off the, get the messaging app, we could send it right through there. What a concept. Praise the Lord. But if you can't get it, we'll figure a way to get it to you. Uh, we'd love for you to uh, participate. Uh, if, you, if you don't have a Hanukkah, 
figure a way to light at least one candle so that you can get started. Amen? Amen. Come, we love you. God bless you. And have a blessed day in Jesus' name. You know, you can change a lot with just 46 characters. For example, you can change where you live. Or you can change your relationship status. Fellas, we do not recommend proposing via text message. You could also change your career, change your vehicle, or you could change just about anything. But maybe this week, you could use 46 characters to change someone's life. Think about it. Pray about it and use your 46 characters for a change.